Okay. Well, friends, welcome to this lecture series on ancient and medieval Western political thought. We have been talking about Plato for the last couple of working hours, friends. Today, we are continuing our last lecture, which we were uh, not in a position to finish. And today, friends, we will continue the discussion on Plato's ideal stage. And we have already come across the various uh, you know, you know, uh, structures of uh, the ideal state being stated by Plato in his famous book, The Republic. Friends, this lecture, we are going to talk about the features of Plato's ideal state. What are the features of Plato's ideal state? Friends, Plato says that, you know, the Republic will be ruled by a philosopher king that is uh, state is ideal state or ideas ideal police is connected by knowledge and power knowledge and power that is the person who hold political power is also the person who will have wisdom so wisdom and power come together in the hand of a particular person who will become the ruler. That is Plato's one important hallmark of the idea of uh, ideal state. Second is that Plato proposes a specialized soldiers, specialized soldiers, that his society, ideal society is that society which is ruled by, sorry, which is defended by a class of people who are the best citizens, spirited citizens. And Plato calls them the auxiliaries. He calls them the auxiliaries who have uh, the soul called the spirit, the spirit. And the philosopher king will have the soul called uh, reason. And friends, a third important feature of Plato's ideal state is that of division of labor division of labor and what is division of labor that Plato creates a society in which all the people are deployed in employment sectors or in jobs for which they are best fit that I have already told you that there are three kinds of people in the human world. There are three kinds of people in the human world. Plato metaphorically says that some people are made of gold. Some people are made of silver. Some people are made of bronze. So, some people have reason, some people have spirit, and some people have appetite. So these people should be sent to the field for which they are ideally fit. You should not send people who have appetitive soul to ruling position. Nor you should send people who have wisdom to craftsmen or to ordinary jobs. That will become counterproductive. So select ideal people for ideal jobs that's called division of labor and another important feature is that it is state controlled education that Plato believes that a good society is one where education is free of cost Citizens should not pay for education. Citizens should be given education free of cost. And who will give education? Who will finance education? The state. So friends, look at, you know, societies in the modern world. Societies in the modern world. You just imagine whether education Funded by government is best or education funded by private capital is best? Friends, it's a very difficult question. 
so whether education funded by state or public money or education funded by private money is best and plato believes education funded by public money is best so that's why plato thinks right from childhood a citizen should be given education by the state so plato never allowed parents to take care of their children to take care of their wards rather the children will be taken care by state and each children so each child will be given a nurse appointed by the state so plato believes human potentialities are not hereditary that your your parents were doctors but that doesn't mean that you will become doctor your parents were good singers that doesn't mean that you will become good singer that you know skills human potentialities are not hereditary it is learned from the community your skills are learned from the community so community will have a greater role in shaping the character in you so education is that's why very important so your functional role in society is decided by your own aptitude not your parental lineage your aptitude is very important and who will decide your aptitude the state will decide your aptitude and your parental lineage is not the basis by which you will be given to certain positions in the state no that is not the fair way of doing things you will be given a position in the police how by way of your aptitude and for that education is very important for plato and friends another very important point is that justice so in fact plato's ideal state is all about justice or plato's republic book republic is a treatise on justice so the platonic theory of justice so that's a famous theory of justice uh, plato talks about one of the you know finest theories of justice in human society and plato says that friends look around not all things are equally created by nature there are mountains there are valleys there are landmass there are ocean there are sky there are earth there are big trees there are small trees there are big animals and small animals friends is there any equality in the nature any kind of equality in the nature and there is no equality in the nature and why there is no equality in the nature because nature doesn't want things to be equal friends that is too same in the case of human beings not all people are same in the world plato believes not all people are same not all people are equal not all people have same faculties in the world all of us are created differently 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 by the nature all of us have different different potentialities all of us have different different skills and you know you know abilities so none of us are equal vis a vis other person none of us are equal because nature doesn't want us to be equal look around as i told you a short while ago that everything in the nature are created in that way uh, which are not similar to one is similar to another one one is not similar to another one that's why i told you there are mountains and there are valleys right so that's why friends plato believes everything in the nature should be should be arranged in that way in which there should be proper harmony between things there should be proper harmony between things so plato therefore says that you should create a society in which each one of you will get your own due what you deserve will be given by the state what is your skill the state will satisfy your needs according to your skills it's not fair to give you so much things which actually you don't deserve 
because you don't have that skill if you don't have that particular skill why should the society give you you know uh, things which you actually don't deserve that's why plato believes you should select people in that way in which you should employ or deploy people in right positions according to their skills so when you create such a society there will be perfect justice because justice is the idea that things should be arranged in the right order it is not about being equal we should give the what is due to each one in this world what is due to each of us in the world that is called platonic theory of justice distributive theory of uh, justice that state distribute things to people in that way in which you will get what you actually deserve that is called platonic theory of justice an ideal state is actually a, a, a society in which justice is perfectly maintained justice is perfectly maintained in the ideal polity that's a good society friends no matter where you so if your society is created in that way where each one of us gets our own right position in the society means there will be no revolution there will be no big radical changes because everything is properly maintained and in ha perfect harmony with the nature and it is possible only through right education it is perfectly possible only if there is a good ideal polity ideal political order that's platonic theory of you know you know you know uh, justice which we will discuss in later in the next lecture and friends another very important point in plato's you know uh, plato's theory of uh, ideal state is that there will be equal treatment of men and women that according to plato every woman will have the opportunity to become a philosopher king that women will get equal opportunity with the men to compete in the examination to learn different subjects and participate in the elimination test to participate in the uh, gymnastics and other kinds of syllabus uh, you can come across other kinds of syllabus and you can compete in the exam if you qualify the exam he will become a philosopher king so in plato system men and women are treated equally there is no discrimination between men and women and the very important point is that of you know communism of wives and property which i have whether i have told you friends about communism of wives and property in the previous lecture that point already mentioned no yes sir it is already mentioned communist of wise and property that's also another important point and friends last but but not least plato senses art and literature plato senses art and literature in plato's ideal society you should not give absolute right for free artistic expression that is dangerous plato believes you should never allow citizen with absolute right for artistic expression an absolute right to artistic expression is an absolute nonsense it is an absolute nonsense so plato believes that in an ideal state there should be positive uh, positive restriction there should be positive restriction on the production of art and literature you should censor artist you should censor literature because that is dangerous it can mislead people literature can mislead people art can mislead people you should not allow artists dancers musicians writers novelists poets to do what they love to do you should never allow them to perform what they wanted to perform because you know 
for Plato in an ideal stage. There is no cheap and there is no scope for there is no scope for cheap unpopular or immoral literature. State should censor all the literature, all the artistic expression, so that citizens should be given or citizens should be exposed to right artistic content, perfect literature. They should read ideal literature. They should come through ideal artistic expressions. Not all people be allowed to express art or write everything. No. State should give special care to the fact that right literature goes to the state to the society. Right artwork goes to the society. Therefore, it can be a public good that will never disintegrate society, that will unify the society. And particularly, friends, this Plato's distaste for distaste for art has a peculiar history because by the time Plato was born, the Greek society was dominated by poets, particularly Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. Iliad and Odyssey. Uh, in before the birth of Plato, Greek people considered that Homer's Iliad and Odyssey were the bedrock of education, were the bedrock of Greek civilization. So that's why all the children born in Athens were taught Iliad and Odyssey. And that has become something like an en encyclopedia of knowledge. Homer's Iliad and Odyssey became an encyclopedia of knowledge that all the child were asked to by heart Iliad and Odyssey. Something like a uh, Bible for Christians. Uh, for the Greek people, Iliad and Odyssey were considered the equivalent of Bible. So, poets occupied a commanding position in Athenian society. But Plato never allowed poets to have or writers to have a commanding position in the society that will be counterproductive that will create dissensions in the society you should not allow people like homer to dominate in your society and plato never agree that homer was a moral teacher that poets are a moral teacher that writers are moral teachers that uh, you know uh, people who have uh, who have written words are moral teachers no Men of letters are not moral teachers. Plato never considers men of letters as moral teachers because they are men of dissensions in society. They create dissensions in society. They create unnecessary dissent in the society. So they should be banned. So that's why Plato never agreed that Homer was a great moral teacher. Maybe Homer was a poet. That's all. That's all. So Plato believed, Plato believed because, you know, people are strongly affected by the art. You are strongly affected by art or artistic expressions. Especially during your childhood, you people are strongly affected by artistic expressions. So that will shape your psyche right from your childhood. So in his Republic, there's a lengthy discussion on art. Plato devotes a lengthy discussion on art. I mean, Socrates. Socrates talks about art with his interlocutor in Plato's Republic, where Socrates uh, he was seen highly critical of art. So, therefore, we can see that Plato was not concerned with whether poetry was good or bad or whether literature was good or bad or whether artistic expressions were good or bad. Rather, he was very much concerned with the fact that art has great 
influence in the minds of people because ordinary people are easily affected by art that's why you know friends uh, all of us are some kinds of fan, uh, in, in, in some way fans of movie actors sign actors why because uh, you know these sign actors have great impact in our mind ordinary people will uh, easily uh, become fans of these kinds of artistic people there is no logic in the way people follow artist there is no logic they are very they are, they are mad about artist ordinary people are very mad about artist they don't have any logic behind simply following uh, movie actors or something like that this is not possible in plato's republic plato has a great disrespect for artistic expressions right so first this is uh, in a sense a brief panorama of plato's ideal state and its features but one thing that we have to uh, consider in this discussion is that plato gives great emphasis to philosophy to knowledge and power that is in plato's ideal republic no men are rulers rather philosophy is the ruler that's why plato calls his ruler the philosopher king the kings are philosophers or the philosophers are kings that's why plato argued that your society your ideal polity should be ruled by philosophy and in political philosophy the word that is used to denote this idea is called rule of philosophy rule of philosophy what is rule of philosophy rule of philosophy is the idea that a good society is ruled not by men but by wisdom but by wisdom so plato's argument is that philosophy should be the rulers so now we are going to talk about that fact that point that philosophers should be rulers of society not simply men philosophers why plato prefers philosophers plato has a reason plato has a specific reason uh, for philosophers to be the rulers of the society in the republic socrates argues that socrates socrates was the main character in plato's republic socrates argues that king should become the philosophers king should become philosophers or that philosophers should become kings or the philosopher kings because philosopher king possesses special kind of knowledge special kind of knowledge a special kind of knowledge so plato argument is that a good society is that society in which justice is ensured justice is ensured a good society is one in which justice is ensured so justice is very important in a good society and plato says in an ideal polis in an ideal polis in an ideal polis we have to take into consideration the human behavior in an ideal polis we should take into consideration how human should behave in different situations and you think simply about de democracy what is problem with the democracy plato says the problem with the democracy is that it is a type of government in which demos will become rulers demos demos means people and or simply said mob 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 will become rulers and plato says mobs are unfit 
to be rulers. Mobs are unfit to be rulers. So for right from Plato's time, friends, right from the ancient world, right from the ancient Athenian world, friends, you will see that there is no philosopher in the world who ever supported the idea of democracy. No philosopher in the history of the world ever supported the idea of democracy. And this tradition begins from Plato. Friends, there is a growing debate about what exactly is democracy. Whether it is the idea of majority rule that if there is a consensus among the majority of your population that this decision should be taken that is called majority rule or there is a Madison in view of democracy Madison in view of democracy what is Madison in view of democracy that that society is best if it keeps or if it gives special care to the minorities special care to the minorities not to the majority that is called Madison in view of democracy but friends in Plato's scheme in Plato's ideal polity none of this will work none of this will work and in Plato's society the thing is that the philosophy will become rule philosophy will become rule that as I told you in Plato's ideal polity there is a rigid division of classes. There is a rigid division of classes. And these classes, Plato believes, these classes are men of specialization, men of specialization. That people are trained into a particular profession. And there are three classes of men in human society. There are three classes of men in human society. What are them? One is some men are by birth born to be philosophers. Some men are by birth born to be fighting force. They are going to be auxiliaries. Some men are by birth appetitive. They will become the third class in the society, they engage in economic life. Plato believes, Plato believes, there are two, there are two main reasons why philosophers must rule the society. There are three classes of men in society, that is the appetitive class, the auxiliary class who are fighters, who believe in honor, but there are also the top class, men of wisdom. And Plato allow the men of wisdom to be rulers, not the auxiliary class, nor the lower class, called the appetitive class, the craftsmen. There's a reason. What is that reason? There is a reason for rule of philosophy in society. Plato says, knowledge, knowledge of moral and metaphysical truth, Mo knowledge of moral and metaphysical truth. will alone ensure justice in the society. Knowledge of moral and metaphysical truth alone will ensure justice in the society. Because of the philosophy's possession of exclusive truth, friends, who in the world really possess knowledge about truth? Not all people in the world possess knowledge about truth. Only class of men who possess knowledge about truth are philosophers. So you should allow philosophers to be the rulers. Plato says that if they rule, that is philosophy, philosophers rule, if they rule, 
the city be governed by people the city be governed by people who are awake who are awake unarnirikya eppol unarnirikkana varana philosophers the city will be awake Plato's basic assumption is that members of three classes differ not only in aptitude members of the three classes differ not only in aptitude but in the very nature of their souls but in the very nature of their souls souls have three elements we have discussed in the previous lecture that our souls have three elements what are them that there are three basic human types there are three basic human types the philosophical type the competitive type the appetitive type and the philosophers the philosophers not the appetitive type not the competitive type not the competitive type not the appetitive type but the philosophy type men the men of philosophy type will never care about wealth friends who in the world will never care about wealth it is only the philosophy type men who never care about wealth philosophy type men have no interest in things that money can buy that philosophy type men have no interest in the things that money can buy because philosophy type men have no bodily desires sharirangal und aagrahangal illatha varana philosophy type men avar sharirangal kondu onnu aagrahikkunnilla manasu kondu aanu aagrahikkunnu so the philosophy type men are not interested in bodily pleasures because their energy energy is concentrated in the pleasure of not the body but the pleasure of the mind sharirathinte sugathilalla marichu manasinte sugathilana philosophy type men interest for example you can find similar examples in our modern world for example clear instances of artist for example a good artist will always care only about their artistic expression they will never care about their bodily uh, uh, bodily pleasures that the kind of dress they wear the kind of food they eat the kind of public images they have good artist will never care about these kinds of things they will only care about good artistic expression they are good artist they will never care about how my body looks upon and how people look at me whether my body is good looking they are not at all bothered right and they were they will they will go through severe privations severe poverty now they are not bothered about their poverty because they are starving for their art priest another example priest and followers of different religious religious vocations they also renounce worldly life they also catholic monks for example they renounce property they are catholic monks renounce property and they renounce their uh, family bonds they renounce their family bonds and their whole life is dedicated to christ catholic monks so they are just like plato's philosopher king at that is rulers rulers are philosophers just like that you know a good artist a, a, a priest a catholic monk or a great scientist friends a great scientist will never bother about their physical appearances they will always bother about their scientific inquiries an absent minded scientist with his mind always focused on his work is a familiar type of plato's philosopher king such great scientists are in fact quite close to plato's philosopher king right so this philosophy type men should rule the society that is what plato says so uh, plato believes plato believes 
that in a good society in a good society men of men of men who have expertise men who have expertise should rule the society men who have expertise should rule the society that plato says in his book republic where socrates was talking to the interlocutor socrates was talking to the interlocutor that socrates considers democracy to a ship which i have already told you in one of my previous lectures in the first semester that socrates was comparing democracy to a ship and what if that ship of democracy is steered by an ignorant person the captain is an ignorant person who doesn't know anything about how a ship moves in the in the sea in the wild sea that a good captain of a ship should know the sky the wind pattern the seasons that all the thing that is pertaining to his craft then only he will become a real ruler of a ship that a good a ruler of a ship should determine how he should steer the ship how he should steer the ship that a good ruler of a ship Uh, should be a real stargazer that socrates is talking to his interlocutor in the book republic that a real ruler of a ship should be a real stargazer that looks at the sky and look at the stars looking at the star a babbler b a b b l e r a babbler that you know he knows everything about the craft so with this allegory of socrates in the book republic that plato says a society is just like a ship because you need specialization to rule the society that's why plato designs the idea of specialization in his ideal polity the idea of specialization in his ideal polity which where he considers that a ruling is a skill ruling is a skill which requires special training that requires special training and also a natural aptitude that you should have a natural aptitude to be a good ruler philosophers must possess qualities that enable them to rule that enable them to rule that a good philosopher should be able to recognize the difference between a good man and a bad man that a friend and a foe that a good thing and a bad thing that is a philosopher should be a lover of wisdom a philosopher should be a lover of wisdom so plato concludes by saying that justice is a virtue justice is a virtue needi ennu parayunnathu oru virtue aanu oru arivu ennu parayunnathu oru virtue pole needi ennu parayunnathu oru virtue aanu അറിവ് ഒരു പ്രത്യേകതരം ലേണിംഗ് ആണ് അറിവ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു പ്രത്യേകതരം ലേണിംഗ് ആണ് ഇപ്പം നമ്മൾ പറയില്ലേ സ്നേഹം സ്നേഹം എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഒരു അറിവാണ് അത് പ്രത്യേകതരം ബിഹേവിയർ ആണ് എല്ലോ വി ലവ് എന്ന് നമ്മൾ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ഭാഷയിൽ എഴുതും പല ആളുകൾ അതിനെ പല രീതിയിലാണ് മനസ്സിലാക്കുന്നത് എന്താണത് എന്നുള്ളത് സ്നേഹം ഒരു ഒരു അറിവാണ് അത് പ്രത്യേകതരം ആക്ടിംഗ് ആണ് അപ്പൊ ഒരു പ്രത്യേകതരം ആക്ടിംഗ് ആയി അതൊരു പ്രത്യേകതരം അറിവായി മാറുമ്പോഴാണ് അതൊരു വർച്ചു ആയി മാറുന്നത് സ്നേഹത്തെ നമുക്ക് സ്നേഹിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ആളുകളെ ഉപദ്രവിക്കാം 
സ്നേഹം നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഒരു ആയുധമാക്കും സ്നേഹം മറ്റുള്ളവരെ ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടിക്കാനുള്ള ഒരു ഉപകരണമായി ഉപയോഗിക്കാം ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് അപ്പോൾ സ്നേഹം ഒരു അറിവായി മാറില്ല സ്നേഹം ഒരു ആയുധമായിട്ടാണ് മാറുന്നത് സ്നേഹം എപ്പോഴാണ് ഒരു അറിവായി മാറുന്നത് എന്തിനാണോ മനുഷ്യൻ സ്നേഹം കണ്ടുപിടിച്ചത് ആ പർപ്പസ് സെർവ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ മാത്രമേ അത് അറിവായി മാറുകയുള്ളൂ അപ്പോ നീതി എന്ന് പറയുന്ന അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഒരു അറിവാണ് അതുകൊണ്ട് നീതി ഒരു പ്രത്യേകതരം അറിവാണ് അതെവിടെ യാഥാർത്ഥ്യമാവുകയുള്ളൂ ഒരു നല്ല സമൂഹത്തിൽ മാത്രമേ യാഥാർത്ഥ്യമാവുള്ളൂ മനസ്സിലാക്കുക തിരിച്ചറിയുക എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഗുഡ്നെസ് ആണ് കാര്യങ്ങളെ തിരിച്ചറിയുക എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് നന്മയിലേക്ക് പോവുകയാണ് എല്ലാവരും എല്ലാം അറിയുന്നുണ്ട് നമുക്കെല്ലാം മൊബൈൽ യൂസ് ചെയ്യാൻ അറിയാം യു നോ ഹൗ ടു യൂസ് ഗൂഗിൾ യു നോ ഹൗ ടു യൂസ് ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് യു നോ ഹൗ ടു യൂസ് യൂട്യൂബ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് നിങ്ങൾ എങ്ങനെ അത് ഉപയോഗിക്കുന്നു എന്നുള്ളത് വളരെ പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ടതാണ് നമുക്കെല്ലാം ഇതറിയാം അതെല്ലാം ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ആണ് അതെല്ലാം ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ആവുന്നുള്ളൂ നിങ്ങൾ ഈ അറിയുന്നതൊക്കെ ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ആവുന്നുള്ളൂ അത് എന്തായി മാറുന്നില്ല അറിവായി മാറുന്നില്ല അത് എപ്പോഴാണ് അറിവായി മാറുന്നത് എന്തിനാണ് ഫോർ വാട്ട് പർപ്പസ് ദീസ് ആർ ബീങ് ക്രിയേറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് വെൻ യു ആർ ഏബിൾ ടു സെർവ് ദാറ്റ് പാർട്ടിക്കുലർ പർപ്പസ് വെൻ ദ ആർ ഏബിൾ ടു സെർവ് ദാറ്റ് പർട്ടിക്കുലർ പർപ്പസ് യു ക്യാൻ സേ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എ നോളജ് അത് ഒരു നോളജ് ആയി മാറും അറിവ് എന്തായി സോറി ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ എന്തായി മാറും നോളജ് ആയി മാറും എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് പോലെ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ഗുഡ്നെസ് ആണ് നോളജ് ഗുഡ്നെസ്സും ഒന്നാണ് അറിവും ഗുഡ്നെസ്സും ഒന്നാണ് അത് രണ്ടും ബ്ലണ്ട് ആയിരിക്കണം അറിവ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഒരു സ്പെഷ്യലൈസ്ഡ് ലേണിംഗ് ആണ് ഇത് ആരിലെ കൃത്യമായി വരികയുള്ളൂ ഫിലോസോഫർ കിങ്ങിലെ വരികയുള്ളൂ ഈ അറിവ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് കൃത്യമായി മനുഷ്യൻ സമൂഹത്തിൽ കൃത്യമായി പ്രകൃതി സന്നിവേശിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് ഫിലോസഫർ കിങ്ങിലാണ് എല്ലാവരിലും ഈ അറിവ് വരില്ല നമുക്കെല്ലാം ഇൻഫർമേഷൻ ഉണ്ട് പക്ഷെ നമുക്ക് എല്ലാവർക്കും അറിവില്ല അറിവ് ആർക്ക് മാത്രമേ ഉള്ളൂ ഫിലോസഫർക്ക് മാത്രമേ ഉള്ളൂ അതുകൊണ്ട് ലെറ്റ് ദം ബിക്കം ദ റൂളേഴ്സ് ബിക്കോസ് ദേ ഗോഡ് വർച്ചു അവരിലാണ് വർച്ചു ഉള്ളത് അവരിലാണ് നോളജ് ഉള്ളത് അതുകൊണ്ട് അവരുടെ റൂള് ജസ്റ്റിഫൈ ചെയ്യാൻ സാധിക്കും എന്ന് പ്ലേറ്റോ പറയുന്നു അവരുടെ റൂള് നമുക്ക് ജസ്റ്റിഫൈ ചെയ്യാൻ സാധിക്കും എന്ന് പ്ലേറ്റോ പറയുന്നു അപ്പൊ ഇങ്ങനെ പ്ലേറ്റോ ഐഡിയ സ്റ്റേറ്റിനെ ഇങ്ങനെ വരച്ച് കാണിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് അവിടെ സ്പെഷ്യലൈസേഷൻ വേണമെന്നും മനുഷ്യൻ മൂന്ന് ടൈപ്പ് ഉണ്ടെന്നും ദ ഫിലോസഫിക് ടൈപ്പ് കോമ്പറ്റേറ്റീവ് ടൈപ്പ് അതുപോലെ ആപ്പിറ്റേറ്റീവ് ടൈപ്പ് ഉണ്ടെന്നും അതിൽ ഏറ്റവും നന്നായി സമൂഹത്തെ ഭരിക്കാൻ കഴിയുന്നത് ഫിലോസഫിക് ടൈപ്പ് ആണെന്നും ഈ ഫിലോസഫിക് ടൈപ്പും ആപ്പിറ്റേറ്റീവ് ടൈപ്പും കോമ്പറ്റേറ്റീവ് ടൈപ്പും ആയിട്ടുള്ള മനുഷ്യനെ സമൂഹം കണ്ടെത്തി അവന് കൃത്യമായ ട്രെയിനിങ് നൽകി അവനെ എവിടെയാണോ പ്ലേസ് ചെയ്യേണ്ടത് അവിടെ കൃത്യമായി പ്ലേസ് ചെയ്ത് ഈ വർഗങ്ങൾ തമ്മിൽ കൃത്യമായ ഒരു ബാലൻസ് മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ മെയിൻറ്റെയിൻ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ മാത്രമേ നീതി ഉറപ്പാക്കാൻ കഴിയുള്ളൂ അങ്ങനെ നീതി ഉറപ്പാക്കുന്ന സമൂഹമാണ് യഥാർത്ഥ ഐഡിയൽ പോളിറ്റി എന്ന് പ്ലേറ്റോ പറഞ്ഞു വെക്കുകയാണ് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ പുസ്തകമായ റിപ്പബ്ലിക്ക് ഇനി ഈ റിപ്പബ്ലിക്കിൻ്റെ മറ്റു ചില പ്രത്യേകതകളുണ്ട് അതിൽ പ്രധാനപ്പെട്ടത് കമ്മ്യൂണിസം ഓഫ് വൈവ്സ് ആൻഡ് കമ്മ്യൂണിസം ഓഫ് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടി ആണ് കമ്മ്യൂണിസം ഓഫ് വൈവ്സ് ആൻഡ് കമ്മ്യൂണിസം ഓഫ് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടി കൂടാതെ റിപ്പബ്ലിക്കിൽ സോക്രട്ടസ് രണ്ട് ലോകത്തെക്കുറിച്ച് പറയുന്നുണ്ട് ദ തിയറി ഓഫ് ഫോംസ് ഓർ ഐഡിയാസ് ടു വേൾഡ്സ് ദ ഇൻ്റലിജിബിൾ വേൾഡ് ആൻഡ് ദ സെൻഷ്യൽ വേൾഡ് ദ സെൻഷ്യൽ വേൾഡിനാണ് നമ്മളൊക്കെ ജീവിക്കുന്നത് അതേസമയം ഇൻ്റലിജിബിൾ വേൾഡിനാണ് ഫിലോസഫർക്കിങ് ജീവിക്കുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഫിലോസഫിക് ടൈപ്പ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ആളുകൾ ഫിസിക്കൽ അപ്പിയറൻസിൽ ബോധേടാവുന്നില്ല ഫിസിക്കൽ അപ്പിയറൻസിൽ ബോധേടാവുന്നില്ല അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞത് ഒരു നല്ല സയൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് ഇപ്പം താടിയും മുടിയും നീട്ടി വളർത്തി നമ്മളൊരു കാലത്ത് കവികളെ പറയുന്നത് അയാൾ യഥാർത്ഥ കവിയാണ് എന്താണ് ഇപ്പം കവി അയ്യപ്പൻ അയ്യപ്പനിൽ അയ്യപ്പൻ അദ്ദേഹം തെരുവിക്കിടന്നാണ് മരിച്ചത് അദ്ദേഹത്തെ ഒരു പരമ്പരാഗത മലയാളി സങ്കല്പത്തിലൊരു കവിയായി സമൂഹം അംഗീകരിക്കുന്നു അയ്യപ്പനെതിര് പിന്നീട് ഒരുപാട് ആരോപണങ്ങൾ വന്നു അത് മറ്റു കാര്യം പക്ഷെ അയ്യപ്പനെ നമ്മളൊരു കവി അംഗീകരിക്കാനുള്ള കാരണം എന്താണ് കവി എന്ന വാക്കിൻ്റെ അർത്ഥത്തിന് അനുസരിച്ച് ബിഹേവ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു അവസാനത്തെ കണ്ണിയായി സമൂഹം അദ്ദ
എപ്പോഴും ആലോചിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ദീക്ഷ നീട്ടി നടത്തുന്ന ഒരു തരം ഒരു 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 സാംസ്കാരിക ചിഹ്നമാണ് കവി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് അതിനെ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് സോക്രട്ടിക് അതാണ് പ്ലേറ്റോ പറയുന്നത് ചില മനുഷ്യർ സോക്രട്ടിക് ആണെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഫിലോസഫിക് ആണ് സയൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് ഒരു നല്ല സയൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് ഒരു നല്ല സയൻറ്റിസ്റ്റ് ആണെങ്കിൽ കുടുംബ ചിന്തയില്ല സാമൂഹ്യ ബന്ധങ്ങളില്ല ഏത് സമയം ചിന്തയാണ് ശാസ്ത്ര സാങ്കേതിക വിദ്യകളെ കുറിച്ച് ചിന്തയാണ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു മോങ്ക് മോങ്ക് എന്ത് ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നു ദൈവകാര്യങ്ങൾ മാത്രം ശ്രദ്ധിച്ചുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നു കുടുംബമില്ല പ്രോപ്പർട്ടി ഇല്ല ഒന്നുമില്ല അതുപോലെയാണ് ഫിലോസഫർ കിങ് ഒരു ഫിലോസഫർ കിങ് ഫിലോസഫി റൂളർ ആകുമ്പോൾ റൂളർക്ക് എന്തിനെക്കുറിച്ച് ചിന്തയില്ല കുടുംബ ചിന്ത പ്രോപ്പർട്ടിയെ കുറിച്ചുള്ള ചിന്ത തൻ്റെ വെൽത്തിനെ കുറിച്ചുള്ള ചിന്ത അല്ലെ തൻ്റെ ശരീരത്തിന് സുഖത്തെ കുറിച്ചുള്ള ചിന്ത അദ്ദേഹം നഷ്ടമാകും അപ്പോൾ അവിടെ ഒരു നല്ല സമൂഹം ഉണ്ടാക്കാൻ കഴിയുമെന്ന് പ്ലേറ്റോ വിചാരിക്കുന്നു അത് ഫിലോസഫിക് ആണ് അപ്പോൾ ഫിലോസഫിക് ടൈപ്പ് മെൻ ഷുഡ് റൂൾ ദ സൊസൈറ്റി എന്നാണ് പ്ലേറ്റോ അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ പുസ്തകത്തിൽ പറഞ്ഞു വെക്കുന്നത് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് നോ ദ ഫ്ലോർ ഈസ് ഓപ്പൺ ഫോർ ഡിസ്കഷ